from the Gospel according to St. Luke, from the 24th chapter, the 13th verse. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. I'm going to invite you to go on a little archaeological journey with me. The town of Emmaus that Luke mentions in his account of an appearance of the risen Christ is a place that pilgrims and scholars have been trying to find for centuries. But the problem is that they found not one Emmaus, but several. And all of them continue to be places that visitors to the Holy Land are taken when their tour includes Emmaus. And for good reason. If Emmaus is the place where the risen Christ appeared to two disciples, then who wouldn't want to go there? But finding Emmaus is not just for archaeologists and scholars. Finding Emmaus should be something that's important to all of us, even if we've never been to the Holy Land and have no plans to go there. Because symbolically, Emmaus is any place where we meet the risen Christ. Now, the main clue for the location of Emmaus is the seven miles that Luke mentions in his account. So scholars and archaeologists and pilgrims have all headed out of Jerusalem, tape measure in hand, so to speak, looking for Emmaus. They've gotten out on the road and have ticked off the right distance from Jerusalem, and they have found several different possibilities. But in another way, they've probably missed the point. The most important clues are found not so much with a tape measure, but with the gospel. And looking at Luke's story, we find the directions that perhaps they've missed. Now, the first clue that people routinely miss is the fact that the two disciples were traveling together. In other words, at a time when they most needed it, they were providing each other with fellowship and support. And as they walked, they were rehearsing the events of the previous weeks, supporting each other as they worked through this major crisis of faith and grief. So our first clue is fellowship. And the second clue is the hospitality that the disciples showed to Jesus. When Jesus came near and asked what they were discussing, the disciples were at first startled. Their leader was dead, and all of their hopes for Israel had died with him. This was no time to deal with the stranger. But even as the disciples worked through their grief, they reached out to that stranger. Cleopas took the time to bring Jesus, whom he didn't recognize, up to speed on all that had been happening. But they didn't stop there. As they reached Emmaus at sundown, they invited Jesus to join them for the evening. Even though Jesus was going on ahead, making it easy for them just to let him go, they invited Jesus to join them for the night. So to fellowship, we add a second clue, hospitality. Now, third, we need to remember what Jesus was doing as they were walking together on that road. Jesus explained to them the word of God. As he retold the prophecy about the Messiah found in Scripture, he pointed out all the predictions that had pointed to the fact that the Messiah was going to suffer and die and rise again. So, so the third clue is God's word. And finally, we reach the moment of revelation. At dinner that evening, the guest becomes the host. Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to the disciples. Jesus acts in such a familiar way, such a Jesus-like way, that the two disciples cannot help but recognize him. Surely this is the Jesus who had taken five loaves and two fishes, blessed them and broken them and given them to the disciples to feed to the 5,000. Surely this was the Jesus who had instituted the sacrament that we know as the Holy Eucharist just a few nights before by taking bread, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it to his disciples. In the breaking of the bread, the disciples recognized Jesus as their risen Lord. So the final clue in this breaking of bread is the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. And by putting together all these four clues, we get a much better idea about where Emmaus is located, the place where the risen Lord can be found. Fellowship, hospitality, word, sacrament. Where you find these, you find Emmaus. You find the risen Christ. Wherever the disciples and followers of Jesus meet for fellowship, extend hospitality to the stranger, proclaim the word of God, and administer the sacraments, will be Emmaus. The important thing for us is not to measure off those seven miles from Jerusalem and then start looking for Emmaus. In fact, Emmaus is everywhere that Christians gather in Jesus' name, everywhere that Christians gather in the power and presence of the risen Christ. Now, 
right now, for obvious reasons, that may seem to be impossible for us. It may seem that we'll not be able to find Emmaus until all this COVID-19 business is past us and the restrictions have been lifted. But even in these restricted times, we can gather in prayer and in word to support and care for each other and to reach out to the stranger. Because right now, as the world struggles with fear and worry, we need to know the power and we need to know the presence of the risen Christ in us and with us and among us.